Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to be doing something a little bit differently. We're going to be uh, doing this masked necromancer here. A hooded fellow with a with a skeletal mask. Should be a little fun. We're going to use the same type of block that we used for our dwarven warrior and our hooded wizard. And uh, <clears throat> you'll be able to look at the overlay here in a moment. But it's going to be on a three and a half inch block of one and a half by one and a half inch basswood. And uh, here are those guys we did on other videos, the Hooded Wizard and the Dwarven Warrior. You can see it's the same height, same style block, same thing. So I'm going to put the overlay while I draw this up here on the left. On the right, you're going to see this Instagram post or Instagram profile, someone named Bagasvich Fantashak. Now this is the guy I take a lot of ins inspiration from for these types of carvings. So I highly encourage you guys to check him out. His stuff is really neat. And just uh, having a chance to imitate his stuff and take a look at his work is really fun for me. And it's something I like to try to emulate in some of these styles of carvings. I think they're really neat. So take a look at that when you get a chance and you'll see some pretty neat stuff. I'll put a link to his profile down in the description of this video as well. So when it comes to, uh, to drawing on this carving, we're just going to do a simple outline of the body of the head, the left and right. The arms are going to meet here at the front, kind of folded like so. It's nothing that's going to be complicated. And uh, take your time when drawing this on. Remember that when you're drawing on the front of a carving, this is just a guide for you. So I, I'm going to erase this section here because I didn't get it lined up just right. Put the arms a little bit further in than I did here originally. You know, and you're drawing it on here. That way you can cut in the right spot. Take a look at what you draw. And like, is that going to look right if I, if I put a knife cut here? Yeah, okay. Now th this will be a little bit wider for those arms. That'll look a little bit better. And uh, if I have the folds of that robe come nice and far down like so, it'll look like it's draping a little bit down. And that'll look kind of neat. And you can see what we're going for on the final product that we're actually getting ready to carve on the left in the overlay. The miracle of modern technology. You can see what we've done before we do it. That's pretty fun. So you can see right here, I'm lining up this left, right elbow with the left elbow. Make sure they're lined up all the way. And then we'll do the top of that hood will come down like so. And underneath the hood, of course, we're going to put some triangles for the eyes and for the nose. Now, this is going to be a knife only carving. I should have said that right off the bat, but <clears throat> I'll put it in the uh, in the description. I'll put a little text up there that says that knife only because a lot of folks don't have all the extra tools. So this will be a little bit simpler, a little bit easier. Won't do anything complicated, right? All right. So now with all carvings, what I like to do when I start off is to just take off these hard edges, just round them off a little bit because then it's a little bit easier on the hand when you're holding this. Now while I do that, I want to say for every carver when you're new. You should always be wearing a safety glove. Just the fact that I don't doesn't mean you shouldn't. I've cut myself numerous times. And if you're a new carver, you're going to likely cut yourself or take that blade into your left hand at some point. So wearing a carving gl glove on your left hand is absolutely beneficial. You should do that. I have uh, gotten to the point now where I feel confident that I'm not going to cut myself. But I have cut myself before, so it's still just good practice to be wearing that glove. All right, so I'm just taking off these rough edges all the way around each corner and then on the corners, I just take a little notch out usually, round them off a little bit because I don't need any of these hard, hard corners on here. And we're going to start here on the left side and just kind of sweeping cuts from our shoulder up to the top of the head, rounding them in and out, so in and out, in and out the top, in the side and out the top. Just like that. And we'll try to get it even to her. We like that. That circle we drew is for like the center of the head. So we keep lined up as we lose stuff on the front and the back. It's hard to keep that line of where the center of the face is going to wind up being. So we're just going to make sure our shoulders are level. And then you can see we got a little bit more to pull out in the front here. And stop your carving periodically. Take a look at it. See where do I need to work on next? Take a little bit more out here. And what else? Take more out over here. Take this shoulder down a little bit more. I can do that. That's looking fairly good. But let's just adjust it a little bit more. 
like so. Looking a lot better. Now we can put a little stop cut right here at the top of the robe. So when we start taking wood away from the face, we won't go down too far. That just gives, gives a chance to mark it. And we can kind of work this into the left and right a little bit as well. Just following that line there. Just do stop cuts, just small ones, just to kind of define that for now. We're not going to do anything major here, just defining it so we know where it's at. We're going to work on the top of the hood first before we get too deeply into these arms. We're just doing this so that it's easier to see where our arms start. And so that when we start taking wood away from the front, we want to set the hood and that face back a little bit. It'll be easier to do it now. And this back here is bothering me because it's pushing in my hands. We're going to smooth this out, take out a large bit of wood back here. And to do that, I was using that lever cut, that uh, fulcrum cut, if you will, using that left thumb as a fulcrum point and rotating the back of the handle down across that thumb, which lets me get more wood out at a time. And you can see it in action right there. I just use that, use the thumb to push up. And with my right hand, I pull the handle down and it gets more wood out that way. Very controlled cut. Controlled cut's the way to go. Those are the ones that don't get you hurt. Just taking away some more of that wood, rounding it off in the back there, up towards the back of the head. And uh, once we get that done, we're gonna do the same thing on the bottom here. Take a look at that. From front to back, he's looking pretty good. We'll smooth this out. We'll get these saw marks off the left and right sides. Um, I said before, I'll say it again. The saw marks on your carving from the uh, the blade of the saw when it's cutting out the block, those will not take paint or stain the same way. So if you leave those in place on the carving, it's going to change the way your carving looks. And it doesn't look as pretty as a uh, portion of wood that's been touched by a blade. So we're going to go ahead and just rough up or cut up the whole surface of the carving. Get those saw marks out of here. And then, as we continue the carving, we don't have to worry about any small section being left over that uh, has saw marks on it. All right, that's pretty smooth. Let's round this portion out here now. Take away a little of those sharp blade marks. Smooth it out a little bit. This will be our back side of our little guy. And smooth it out, going up towards the head again. Depending on grain direction, it might be roughed up a little bit. You just want to smooth it out, make it look pretty again. Now that looks fantastic. Nice and smooth. We can move back over here to the front. And uh, we want to bring that face back a little bit here. Sit down a little farther. So we're just going to take a few cuts off the front of here. Bring it in back. And it's easy to get that knife in the bottom because we already took the top half of the hands off here. Take a little bit more. Like so. And that's a pretty good start. Those hands will be out pretty far. We'll do the bottom part of them, define that a little bit now. Put a stop cut right here. Come down to it. Take that a little bit out. There we go. And a little bit more. There we go. Using that left thumb to pull the knife down. Very controlled kind of cut there. Yeah, it's looking good. I'm going to put this left shoulder in place here. We'll push cut and then slide it down to it. Help define that a little bit. Then we'll keep on working that in a little right here. I'm going to stop cut and pulling down to it. I'm not pushing with the right hand. I'm pulling with the left thumb. That cut is controlled. Left thumb is the engine or my knife blade. Right hand is just holding the knife. So all these cuts are very controlled and I can't really slide out and cut myself because it's that thumb that's pushing that thumb that's pulling it's not getting shoved around i'll stop cut and coming on to it cut that out he's starting to take some shape now isn't he just even this out same as the other side a couple sweeping cuts and coming down our stop cut again and ship that little guy out nice and easy And I was pushing my chips into a pile, just get them out of the way. Let's go ahead and do the rest of this under that robed arm here. 
all the way back and just stop cut down to it nice and gentle small cuts whittle away at it get deeper and deeper as you go to define that arm more depth is good and again like i'm using that left thumb right here as the mechanism for driving this blade which is why it's okay to cut towards my hand right it's just that thing i can pull down and i'm not pulling all the way down i'm just pulling down as far as i need to go so it's not the right hand's not doing anything just holding the blade so i'm not like in danger of slicing into my hand it's just that thumb only pulling down to the point that you see not doing that just the left thumb pushing in and pulling down like that push in and then use that thumb to pull down and uh yeah creates nice little cuts and it's controlled I'm not endangering myself I'm not going to be cutting my hand sometimes you'll see a transition like that right there and that's because i had to pause or stop the video because i am a father of three children and they're all wonderful but kids need attention right now and then and i stop what i'm doing to give them that take care of them all right, so doing the uh, the other arm now, same thing. Stop cuts and then pull cuts down to it. To find that arm, put a little depth in there. Stop cuts and pull cuts down to it. And then we're take out the stuff in the bottom here. Smooth it out at the same depth that the arm is. And just keep defining these uh, the arms of this robe here. Starting to come through, starting to look good. And it can come up in this direction too sometimes. Depends on what feels best in your hand, what uh, feels comfortable to you. That's how you should carve, and you'll be rotating carvings to look for that right angle that you can come in and carve where it feels easy, like, like you have control of the blade, and that's what you should be looking for. How do I feel like I have best control of the blade? What should I do? And then do it that way. It's looking pretty good. Let's take a sharp corner off the front of those robes, because it's not going to come to a point. Like two hands coming together. We'll put a little V-cut in the front of it later. But uh, I'm going to take the rest of these arms in here along the top now to find that. We'll stop cut and then uh, stop cut there. And I'll be able to cut this chunk out. Pulling down with my left thumb. Like so. And I stop cut right here in the bottom just to chunk it out. There we go. Do the other side too. Put a stop cut there and then we'll put a stop cut right here and now we'll push up just a little bit and a stop cut the end just to make sure we clip that out of there and add a little more depth to it if it didn't get as deep on the first one as this one we'll just do that get a little bit deeper now we're starting to get some shape to him he's coming along a little bit more roundness to the front of this robe here. Take out these sharp corners that we had left over from those cuts. Looking pretty good. And uh, now we can kind of round out these corners here on the side of the hood a little bit. Take out those saw marks as well. Just like we did in the back, we don't want saw marks in the front of the carving because when we go to stain this carving, we're going to use some dark walnut stain on it. We don't want those saw marks there because they will color differently than the carving, than the wood like that's been touched by a blade. They will absolutely color differently. There's no doubt about it. Take it off the front of these <coughs> robed arms here as well. Now there's all kinds of things we could do with these arms, these, these robed arms where it's hanging down low. We could use a, a U-gouge and add some layers to it. But we're not trying to do that. We're trying to keep this a simple knife-only carving. Give folks something they can do to, you know, color and put in their bookshelf and be able to point at and say, look at it. I made that right there. There's plenty of guys that are absolutely phenomenal carvers, way better than I am. Like <clears throat> like Alec Lacasse, Lucas Cost. These guys are making these realistic things. They're just absolutely amazing, and I love looking at their work. We're going to start working on the hood in the back of the head, I think, next. But uh, with like the cast and uh, all them, their, 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 their carvings are absolutely amazing, but they don't do anything silly. They don't do anything whimsical and just kind of fun as much, you know? They're, they're, they're so realistic with their carvings. I don't want something realistic. I want something 
caricature style or cartoony style or just kind of <laughs> silly and fun. I don't have to do anything serious all the time. I don't have to be serious. I don't like being serious all the time. I'm serious when I go to work. This is not work. This is relaxation time. So I want to do a little necromancer to go on my fantasy bookshelf to, to stand opposed to my wizard and my dwarven warrior. I tell you, when you do these cross cuts like this along that end grain, this is where you find out how sharp your knife is. If it cuts through here pretty smooth and you get that really smooth finish to it, your knife's sharp. But it feels like it's tearing. It feels like it's really hard to get through there and it's just like skipping and not looking smooth. You need to strop your knife. And the number one reason new carvers quit, the number one reason they stop or they fail is because they have not sharpened their knife properly. They have not stropped often enough. So strop your knives, sharpen them. And when you got a sharp knife, you won't have any problems doing all of these cuts. All right, so we're rounding over the top here on the front. Still a little bit there. And bringing it towards the front, right? A nice, nice slow slope along the back there. And a sharper slope on the front. And we're going to... That's looking pretty good right there, right? You see how it's sitting more, a little bit more forward for the face because he's going to have a mask on him and the hood's going to sit out a little far too right there. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw our outline for our hood. And this may change as we carve because let the carving tell you what to do and where to carve next. We're going to bring that hood down like so. And a little bit further down the other side too. And then we'll take our rough out knife and we'll go ahead and harden that line a little bit through here so you can see it easier and then we'll take our knife and we'll cut the section out we'll try to do it with one deep cut and uh, see how we do all right so when you're doing this coming at an angle just slightly kind of in towards the face a little bit and use that left thumb to push the blade along and that left hand will move the carving. So that right hand's not pushing the blade. The blade's kind of staying still and I'm using that left hand to pull the carving and that left thumb to push the knife blade a little bit. And this allows me to not cut myself because I'm controlling what happens. Even though this is a difficult cut to make, I'm not in danger of losing my grip and slicing myself because I'm not pushing that hard. I'm not pulling that hard. You follow? So I'm going to do the same thing here. And I'm just going to rotate that. And you can see my left hand moving a little bit. I'm moving that carving kind of up and over a little bit right here like that. And that right hand is holding that knife still as I bring that carving a little bit through there, using my thumb to keep that pressure down, right? I'm not in danger of slicing into my fingers because I'm not putting that much pressure into this. Okay. There we go. Pull that knife blade out. And we're not, not, not swiping stuff, right? We're just going to do a nice sweep in here. Nice push cuts. Right like this. And sweep up through here for this. And we'll pull through like that. So we're going to do this side first. We're just going to sweep up in there using that left thumb as the engine. And then we're going to stop cut that piece out. Nice and easy. Now we're going to do this side. It's going to be a pairing cut. So I'm going to choke up on this blade a little bit, right? Got my hand up in there like this. And using my right thumb to hold it in place, I just pull in like a pair, like you're carving into a pair, right? And now we're going to do this front portion too. I'm going to do that pairing cut again. Get this knife blade in the right spot and just peel right into it. And we're not pushing real hard with these. Not danger of Slicing into myself, slow, steady, controlled cuts. That's the order of the day. And we'll stop cut there to knock that out. Nice and easy. Now we're going to bring the top of that hood down a little bit. Down to that line that we cut. Because that's the opening of the hood. So we don't need a thick, thick piece of fabric. We need to be thinned out. So we'll do that a little bit right there. Bring it in on the sides a little bit too. I'm going to sweeping cut kind of in and then out at the top. 
Curve it up. Curve it up. Keep that, that angle we've got there, that curved angle going up towards the top of the head. And the same thing on this side. Just thinning that out now. We got uh, the opening of the hood defined. We can see, oh, this hood's a little bit too thick, right? Well, adjust as necessary. You can always take more wood away. You can never add wood back. So we've adjusted that fairly well. Let's do a little bit more Maybe right here on these shoulders, round that corner and off. We'll do the same thing on the other side. A little too sharp. Take that down. All righty. And now we're going to do more here in the face and on this chest there. I think let's, uh, let's look at what we're going to do here. We're going to put a mask on him, right? A skeletal mask. So he's a necromancer, so he's evil. So we'll put some easy to do, some triangles on the left side and on the right side. Those are easy to chip out of there. We'll do one in the middle of the nose, and then uh, maybe a top of the jawline. If it's a mask, you're not going to have a full skull. You can only have it up to like the top of the jaw. You wouldn't have the bottom of the jaw. So we'll put this in over here and down. And leave enough room on the bottom shelf there so we can get a set of teeth in there. You see? Now, as we carve this guy, make sure to take a look at the uh, overlay on the left. And that will show you what our finished product is going to look at. We're going to do an angled cut in towards the middle of the eye. And now another angled cut in towards the middle of the eye. And then we're going to do a stop cut along the back side. And most of that's chipped out already. There we go. Now, on the other eye, same thing. We're going to do an angled cut in. And then we're going to come in from the top and come down to meet that same angled cut. And then a stop cut on the back side. We'll see if we can't just chip that out. Now, if it doesn't come out right away, you just do it again. Put that first cut in and try to meet up on the edge. On that, where that tip of the blade is going, that's where you're trying to meet up at in there. And for spot like this is kind of hard to get that chip out of there sometimes so just keep working at it be gentle be slow and be patient to get it out of there there's a little bit of that left in there still now i'm just gonna take the knife and clean it up make a cut it's hard to do this with this big knife but i'm trying to keep it just one knife one rough out knife but normally i might switch over to my detail knife to get in there a little bit easier but uh, there we go, we got most of that out. I'm gonna clean this up by cutting a little bit more off the inside of that eye. That way that line of the eye just looks nice and smooth. Like so, knock that out. And do that again. If you don't like something, the surface is too rough, just uh, take your knife and smooth it out, rough it out. Brush it off. A good stiff bristled brush is fantastic for carving. You should always keep a bristled brush around, a hard bristle, because it can knock some things loose on carving. Especially when you're doing, doing detailed work, you know. It'll push those little fuzzies off, knock them off. You'll be amazed at how often you use one once you have one. All right, now we're going to work on this nose. Again, an angled stop cut in towards the middle of the nose. And then the left side angled stop cut in towards the middle of the nose. And then we're going to come in from the bottom at an angled stop cut, same way, and just chip out that little pyramid, like so. And there is the base of the nose for our skull mask. There we go. Now, take a little bit off that, smooth it out a little bit. <laughs> All right, now let's do a stop cut here on the right hand portion of the jaw and then bring it down like so and then we'll cut this out we'll stop cut along the back and then cut it out from this side stop cut there and pop that chip out and there 
Just keep working those lines till it pops out. And if it doesn't, do another cut along with those lines to pop it out. And on the left side, it's the same thing. A stop cut on the side, stop cut along the top, and then a stop cut along the other side. Or just uh, slice up to it and then do the stop cut like that. And so we've kind of defined the left and right cheeks. And just cut over to that a little bit to clean that edge up. Like so. And take a look at the overlay. You can see what we're going for. You can see how it's going to look when it's done. And take your time to clean up those edges. Don't leave rough edges. If you can take a moment, take just a little bit more off to make that edge look clean. Then go ahead and just take a little bit more off to make that edge look clean. And like I said, it's not a complicated carving. This is very simple. We're going for a simple mask too. A little bigger and thicker than we might have gone for. If we're going to use a little detail knife, but that makes it easier to carve for a newer carver. All right, now we're going to define the bottom of that teeth, right? The bottom of that jaw and cut up to it. So a stop cut into there and then cut up to it. Take a look at the overlay and you can see what we're going for. Take out some of this right here. It's a little bit too bulky there underneath the mask because we should be going into the chest. The mask is sitting on top of the face. The face would be behind that, a little bit deeper, so we don't want the chest to be sitting out too far. Like the mask is the face or something, you know? That's looking pretty good so far there. We'll still need to find the teeth right here along that top edge, but let's clean that up a little bit first. Angle that. And then, uh, yeah. It's looking pretty good so far. All right, so on the hands, we're gonna put a V cut right here. We're gonna use the knife and just press down right in the middle there to form a line that's uh, centered. And then we're gonna cut angled in towards it from one side and angled in towards it from the other side. And smooth out that rough corner and do it again. And give us some separation on the top as well. I'll flip it around and we'll give a little bit more separation at the bottom too. Around those corners. All right, because this is a robe coming together, not two triangles coming together. I'm trying to make it look like, like a little bit more like cloth. I'm gonna do enough of these little guys that someone could use them as like a basis for a chess set. I think that would be pretty neat. If anyone ever does that, if you use these guys as a base for a chess set, I want to see pictures. Let me know that you've done it. Send me a message or post it on Facebook or Instagram. Let me see it. Speaking of which, you guys should absolutely follow me on Instagram and Facebook. You can see my uh, my links right here. And uh, definitely reach out to me. If I see you follow me on Instagram, I am absolutely going to follow you back if I see wood carvings in your post history. Because the wood carving community... Is one of the best things about this hobby. All right, just uh, little lines here for teeth. And then knock out a notch for the left and right side of each of those lines you created. Snip it off the top and angle that line. Snip it out of the top and angle that line. And then we're gonna flip it over once we get all these lines angled from this side. And we're going to do the same thing on the opposite side, like here. There we go. Nice and easy. Take your time to get it done right. Don't cut too deep. Remember, you can always take more away. You can never add wood back. Right like so. All right, so we got some teeth on our mask. I'm going to clean up that bottom edge there. And you can separate the teeth in the bottom too, but we're not gonna get too deep into that right there. All right, take my brush, brush things clean. All right, so he's we got a pretty good job there. Not many details here, right? So what can we add to add more details? What can we do? Um, for first, let's 
move this out a little bit and we'll think about this, right? Other carvings I've done, I've added detail in different spots and we want to add some detail to this. What can we do? We can add some trim along the base of the robe. Um, we can put some trim along the front of the robe, like a, a, a Santa carving I did not too long ago, right? And a lot of times on your carvings, you're going to look at them and when you're doing something new, you can think, oh, I could do this part like I did that one guy that time, or I can do this hand like I did that hand on that gnome. I can do this beard like I did that beard on that Santa Claus. I could do these teeth like I did on that uh, cigar rest skull that I had. And as you're doing more carvings, you try new things. You're going to get new tools for your carving toolbox, new techniques, new things you could add to this new carving, new details you can add. Right now, I'm just cleaning up this hood, making it a little bit small, thinning it out a little bit, because looking at this mask, I can feel like this hood is just too thick, too fat, right? So we're just going to take more off here in the back, more off the sides, angle it higher in the front, lower in the back, and then a slight decline down the front of that right there. So it looks like an actual hood with the head resting a little bit higher in the middle, like a hood would on someone's actual head, right? that angle there that's what we're going for and the overlays on the left you can look at that but first we're going to add some detail next um i'm going to take a little bit off this corner here we're going to round off these arms clean that up a little bit start making it look more lifelike round off that corner and we're just going to adjust things jump around a little bit here as we clean up our lines Take a little bit more off right here. To the other side here, we'll bring that elbow back a little bit farther. I'll get in that side. Just slice cut and then stop cut. Slice them off the bottom to smooth it out a little bit. And get those shavings out of the way. The same thing over here, smooth that out. Bring those rubs straight down at an even level. That's what we're going to go for. Bring it down the front there, around this back, and take a look at it. Looking better? I think it's looking better. Alrighty. Now, we're going to try to clean up this edge here. Take a little bit more of that meat out here and define that. Well, it's a little more depth there to put a little shadow on either side of the jawline. And you should be looking at your carvings when you, as you get done and think, where can I add more depth to create more shadow? What spots can I add that in? Where's it gonna look better at, right? I think it looks pretty good there. Let's take a little bit more off the front of that hood. More off the front there. Try to thin that hood out, it's cloth, right? We don't want to look too thick. Smooth it out, round it out. A little bit more right there. If you're trying to match me cut for cut, I would urge you to not. I want you to look at your carving and decide what your carving needs more. Which is what I'm doing here. Do I need to pull off more on this side versus that side? Judge it. That's how you're going to be able to move past me. Well, you don't need to file a tutorial anymore. All right, that looks fantastic. I like that. Now, we're gonna work on bringing a line down for this front of the robe here. So I put a nice stop cut right there. And we're gonna do a V channel. Take a little bit on the left, snip it out, and do the same thing on the right. I'm gonna do it at an angle like that, do it all at once on this one. So we got a line for the front of the robe there. Now, we're gonna add Snip that out a little bit, clean that up. Now we're going to add some trim here along the base of the carving all the way around. So we're just going to do a stop cut right here. Put a mark all the way around, pushing the blade in the back. And a nice straight line all the way around the back of the carving. And then we'll stop cut right down to it. Be very careful here because it's easy to cut right past it and cut right 
whole trim that we're building there off all the way. So you're not pushing hard, not taking off a lot, just a little bit at a time, just chipping away at it. So we're gonna go all the way around the base. A little bit at a time. A little bit at a time. Now I mentioned following me on Facebook and Instagram already, but uh, on YouTube, I want to keep making videos. I want to expand the wood carving community. I want to get new people involved, get new people trying these things because the more people carving, the more carvings we get to see, right? So if you would like the video, comment down below. Just even a comment telling me that I'm doing okay, that I'm doing terrible, anything. Help me out. Give me some feedback. I would really appreciate it, especially if you share the video or like it. It really helps out, and I, I really, I'm really thankful for it. Okay, so we got that all the way around the side. Now let's add a little trim coming down here to meet up with that bottom piece. Stop cut there at the bottom, and then we're gonna cut right up there to the top, which adds that little piece of trim there on the front of the robe, all the way up underneath the arms. Smooth it out. We'll do the same thing on the other side here. Right about there to keep it even. And you'll be able to look at the overlay on the left to see how it's going to turn out. And ship that little piece out there. And a little bit as these two pieces of trim connect, we'll put a little line right there to delineate it. All right, so let's do that trim up here as well. Stop cut and then trim out a little bit underneath it and chip it out of the top. Like so. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. A line right there. And slice it a little bit out and stop cut the bottom and chip it out. And we'll separate them down the middle with a little V cut here. So one from one side and another one from another side and take out this little V channel of wood with a stop cut at the bottom pops right out and then we'll smooth those corners out so they don't look rough it goes right up there underneath the edge of that mask because his neck is up underneath the edge of that mask right let's round out the sleeve on this side we did the left arm we didn't do the right arm so we did the same thing we did before over there and as you skip things you'll notice them later and be like oh i need to fix this up here, make that a little bit deeper here. And bounce around a little bit as you clean up edges. Clean up that. Something we didn't do on the, uh, the inside edges of these elbows is put a little V-notch in there. That's a neat little trick that you can do is you can put a little V-notch at an angle on the inside of that elbow. And it really gives an effect like, a, like an arm like a folding on the cloth right there. And we'll go ahead and put one of those on each side here momentarily once we finish putting a little bit more depth to those inside elbows, cleaning up those lines a little bit more. Remember, a chest should be broader at the top, thinner as it goes down. So that's why we make that a little bit deeper. Bring that edge of that hood down here. More clearly define that chest the separation of the robe I like it okay so this is what I'm talking about with that corner we'll clean this out here like that and then clean that one out round it out as well clean up those edges so you don't get all those knife lines out of there and then round this spot off right here cloth, right? It should be sitting smoothed out a little bit. Not hard edges. Hear that V cut right there. And we'll do that V cut I talked about right here as well. This one, is that deep enough? Not quite. Let's do a little deeper than that. And take a look at that overlay to see what we're going for with that V cut on the, on the elbows. There we go. Now it looks like it's folded up underneath his arms. Looks more like a like a robe that way, right? 
All right, we got that trim along the middle and the base. Now, what else can we add here? We could probably add a belt, maybe along the back here. Right, it'll be under the arms in the front. But as we move to the back, we put a little belt right here, and that'll add some more details, some more, some more contours to the back side of the carving, which will make it more interesting. So we're going to do stop cuts along the top and bottom of these lines, carving down to the top line and up to the bottom line. Make that a little bit more detail all the way over there. And just a push cut in and slice up to it ship it out and we're just going to do that all along here push cut in slice up to it slice up push cut push cut slice up anywhere you want to just ship it away ship it out whittle away a little bit at a time nice stop cut bring it all the way around I'll do a couple chips to stop cut them out. Try to maintain an even depth as you go around the back of this and we'll round out the belt afterwards. Right now we're just putting those stop cuts in a few at a time and chip them away. I apologize if I'm sniffling. It's uh, allergy seasons for me. And we'll smooth this out here at the base of the robe because with stop cuts at the bottom and top, it kind of looks like it's bunching up. We don't want that. We want it to be a smooth robe. Yeah. Bring those lines up. And even though this is a knife only project, I'll pull the gouge out once I get this belt done. And I'll show you a little trick you can do with the gouge if you want to. And if you have one available, you don't have to do this. If you want to, you can make it look like folds that are coming up and down to the belt real easy with a gouge like showing people things they can do with extra tools because it encourages folks to try to expand their horizons maybe get some more wood carving tools and that is like crack to me more tools more tools i always want more tools I like, like collecting them look at the background here look at all the knives i got look at all the gouges i've got i'm not doing a carving for a video i have like 20 tools out at a time i'm using all of them i'll use three different four different knives for different parts of a carving. All right, just still just doing those slicing cuts down, push cuts in just to find that belt. A little bit at a time. We're looking pretty good so far. We've got a lot more detail. Now we'll look at uh, rounding off this belt here along the top, and then we'll round it off along the bottom as well. Just a little slicing that corner just slicing that corner off to make it round as it goes around his back it'll be a good thick belt right through there just round it off that bottom round it off and if you push too far and you get a a knife cut in there underneath there just stop cut back up into it clean it off you know don't leave cut marks that you don't want to Take the time to try to get them out now. Make the carving look a little bit better than it might have. And you'll get better and better at this kind of thing. If you keep trying to fix your mistakes, keep trying to fix your errors, you're just going to keep improving. All right, let's smooth this out along the back down towards where we did those stop cuts. We don't want it to be too sheer of an angle right there. We want it to come down to his back. This one might be a little bit muscular, right? If he's a little bit muscular, his back is going to go out a little bit as it goes up. But we don't want to go in too far out. And bring, cut those hard edges off. All right, that belt is looking pretty good so far. Just got to bounce around a little bit, clean some things up. Get those things out of there, those little fuzzies. That belt is looking pretty good, but we're going to smooth this part out there. That's fantastic. He's got a lot more detail now than he did. So, let's get that part right here. A little too rough. I'm just gonna, you know, when you're spinning them around, if you notice something that needs to be fixed, just go ahead and fix it. And we're going to go ahead and take the sharp corner on this trim in the base, and just going to take that and round that off all the way around. That's what we're going to do. Just 
take that hard corner off. Like it's coming down to a separate piece of cloth that comes out of the first. Or trim along the edge. I'm making a V cut, I guess, here, if you would. Take your time. Slow and easy cuts. Nothing too quick. Keep control of the blade. That way you don't hurt yourself, don't cut yourself. Keeping control of the knife is the order of the day. You develop good habits at controlling the knife blade, and you'll be able to carve longer without problems. All the way up to there. And we're going to put that little line right there to match both sides. Smooth that side out a little bit. That trim coming up. And smooth out that inside line a little bit. On this side as well. Just taking that hard corner off. Right down to that trim there and taking that excess out. There we go. Take the brush to him, clean him off. Get all those fuzzies off there. And that is looking pretty good. He's got more detail. Got a good robe, good mask, good belt in the back. We can smooth out that section there a little bit. But other than that, I think he's turning out pretty well. He can be like a bishop in a chess set for the for the bad guys. But on the belt, I was talking about putting that V-gouge in there, right? So I'm going to show you what I was talking about. Now, this whole card can be knife only. You don't have to do this. But if you do use a gouge, like this, about a, it's about a number nine. A good sharp inclined gouge, right? We put a couple marks in like this going up to the belt, but not through the belt. And some in the other direction as well, in the same spots. Different lengths, we'll vary it up a little bit. And that would give the belt an appearance like the fabric is coming bunched down into it, right? One here, a little bit longer one, a short one. And the other side will maybe make this a little bit of a longer one, a little bit of a longer one, there's a longer one, there we go. And then we just pop that out with a knife, pop that one out. Now we got it. And the same thing with these other four little pieces. And you don't have to do this, I'm just showing you what another option is to adding more detail into your carving if you have this option. And it will add more shadow, a little bit more texture to the back of the carving. You see, I was saying how it looks kind of, kind of like the, the material is bunched up there under the belt, right? A little bit of fluff right there. We can peel up underneath it again with that and then snap it out with the knife. There we go. And so, yeah, the uh, Hooded Wizard could be a, you know, a bishop on one side and this little necromancer here could be a bishop on the other side of a chess set. Be a pretty neat little setup, wouldn't it? But now we're going to go ahead and do the uh, the finishing touches on him. And the finish I've shown in other videos, so I'm going to kind of speed through it on this one here. We're going to use this black walnut Danish oil right here. That's what's in this jar. I took it out of the original containers, put it in a, a mason jar. And then afterwards, we're going to use this paste finishing wax. So you can see it speed up. I'm just going to dip them in the dark walnut oil and then paste finishing wax and use this bristled brush here to clean them. This is not the same brush I was using to do uh, the carving, but uh, it's one I use specifically for this finish. And away we go. All right, so when I'd use this, I just dip the guy right in there to flip him over, dip him again and wipe him off immediately. Take a look here. That shows you how sharp the knife was, that mirror-like almost finish, and it looks so gorgeous. I love how that looks. And that is just with the Danish oil soaking into that end grain. So very beautiful. And it's gonna look even better when we put a little wax on there and polish it up. So back to fast. All right, so with this wax, I heat it up with the blow dryer and then I just wipe it in every service, every crevice and with the, using the paintbrush here and the paintbrush, the toothbrush to push it all in real good and thoroughly. And then I buff and buff like crazy. And there you have it. There he is all finished up. Our little necromancer. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. I really appreciate it. Make sure you like, subscribe to the channel. 
let me know how I'm doing. Do you guys like this kind of content? Am I doing well? Should I do something else? Give me comments down below and let me know. Other than that, thank you guys for your time. I really appreciate you guys watching and I'll see you next time.